Let's talk about class invariants. So what is an invariant? If we break down the word invariant, it means not varying or not changing. So it's a condition that should always be true. And in the context of classes, a class invariant specifically describes a condition that should always be true over the course of an object's lifetime. So to give a concrete example, Let's think about some invariants that we'd want to maintain about a TV class. So looking at the member variables here, you might uh, think about uh, some invariants that might relate to the range of values that we'd consider valid for a TV. So we have this channel and volume member variables in our TV class. And we might want to enforce that the volume has a predefined set of valid ranges. So an example invariant that we might say for the TV class is that a volume can never be negative because a negative volume doesn't really make any sense. Uh, another idea is we can make an invariant that enforces that channels are only between 1 and 500, or some range of numbers. Uh, and that would just be something that we as programmers would define for our class that we're trying to create. And basically, we're just saying that these states are what we consider to be valid for any instance of our class. So how do we actually enforce these invariants in our code? There are two keywords that we've learned that are really helpful in making sure that the state of the instances of our class is always guaranteed to satisfy our class invariance. And the first helpful keyword is the private keyword. So remember, private is an access specifier. And within that section of our class that's marked private, we usually put our member variables because we want to hide those member variables from the outside world. Private prevents anyone outside of the class from going in and accessing or changing the member variables to a value that would break the class invariance that we define. So this means that within this video game class, the player member variable can't be modified or accessed from outside of our class unless we provide some accessor function within the public section of our class. So nobody can actually go in and access the private underscore member variable directly. That means that we can guarantee that no one in the outside world, essentially outside of this video game class, can modify player in a way that we wouldn't want them to. Another helpful keyword is the const keyword. If we specify const in the return type of our functions, what that keyword does is that it ensures that the value that our function returns is constant, which means that it can't be changed or modified. So we're providing an accessor function to let other, uh, other people outside of the video game class access the player. So we want to let them uh, access or like read into, say, the stats of the player, but we don't want them to be able to mutate it. So the const effectively makes the player object we, that we return in this get player accessor function. Um, it's going to be view only, essentially. So we can rest assured that no one will make unwanted changes to the player that we're returning in our video game.